So if you have been to a Unit 4 seminar, you know the basic foundation for what we're going to be doing today, arithmetic series, uh, and we're going to do geometric series. This is not going to be as long as the Unit 4 seminar because I don't have as many types of different types of questions or concepts to uh, give you today, but you do need a strong foundation of knowledge for Unit 4 to kind of understand what we're doing. But write down everything. Uh, I'm going to start off with, you don't have to copy this down, but this is the handshake problem. Uh, basically, uh, it's a problem I used to model this for another class. So if we have one person in the room and we're trying to count the number of handshakes, uh, well, you can't really give yourself a handshake. So that counts as zero total number of hand, uh, handshakes. But if we have two people in the room, we have one handshake. If we have three people in the room, three handshakes are possible, and so on and so forth. This demonstrates uh, a type of series. And if you notice, we're adding all of our totals together. So the main definition of a series is being able to add the terms of an arithmetic sequence. So um, if our sequence is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, arithmetic series would be adding all the different terms of the sequence. Now this is the arithmetic series formula. It is uh, very similar to our arithmetic series ge uh, sequence general formula. Now it's very important not to confuse the ter two formulas. They are similar but also very different. So our sum of an arithmetic series where our arithmetic sequence formula was Tn is equal to A plus n minus 1 times d, the series formula is a little bit more complicated. However, the terms all mean the same thing. A is your first term, d is the common difference, and n is the number of terms. I'm going to give you a minute to copy that down. We can also write the series formula. Instead of putting everything under the denominator of 2, and I can write the formula like this. Sn is equal to n over 2 times 2a plus n minus 1d. Now when you're using this formula, your bed mass rules are really important. Bed mass kind of depicts what you do first. So you're always going to deal with the terms inside the bracket first. Okay, I can move on to the next. So the next slide is an example of the handshake problem. So if I have so this is my series, 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. My first term is 0. Now it's really important, that is very important, because in the past, whenever we've had 0 mathematically, you've kind of ignored it. But when we're talking about sequences or series, 0 can actually be a term. So you've got to remember that. Now our common difference for this particular series is positive 1. And the number of terms that we're trying, we're trying to find the sum for the first five terms. So the first one, there's five people in the room. So where, wherever you see n in your formula, I'm going to replace that with positive 5. Wherever you see a, you will replace that with 0. And wherever you see d, you're replacing it with positive 1. So when I plug everything in, notice I'm putting my n over 2 in the side. n divided by 2 is 2.5. And then everything inside my bracket, 0 plus 4 times 1, that's going to solve to 4. So your bra whatever's inside the bracket, you're multiplying with this n divided by 2. And this 10 means that the sum of the first 10 terms is 10. I mean, sorry, the sum of the first five terms, because n is equal to 5. The sum of the first five terms is equal to 10. That's all the series is. We're just taking this one extra step. Make sure to copy this down, because this could be a possible test question. <coughs> Uh, 
Okay, I can come back to this later. But let's get uh, go into something a little more complicated. So I want to have this. All right. And I can pull this down. So if we are given the sum of the series when you are given just the first couple of terms in the series, I want to calculate my sum. So the arithmetic sequence, we're not given the series first. All we're given is the arithmetic sequence. I know this is an arithmetic sequence because there's a fixed difference among each of the terms. We can rewrite this, uh, okay, so whenever you have the first couple of terms, in order to solve for the series, you have to be given the value of n. You cannot calculate a series if you only know the first couple of terms if you aren't given n. However, from the sequence, I do know that my first term is equal to 5, a always represents the first term, and my common difference is equal to 3. So the question is asking me, find the sum of the series when n is equal to 15. In other words, we're trying to find the sum of the first 15 terms in this arithmetic sequence. That is what series translates to. So the first thing you're going to do is write my arithmetic series formula. Sn is equal to n divided by 2 times 2a plus n minus 1d. So since I know my value for n and I know my a and d, you can simply substitute everything into the formula. I'm going to work the inside of the brackets out for you so you can see how bed math is actually working. So 2 times 5 is 10 plus 15 minus 1 is 14, but that 14 has to be multiplied by 3. So before I can solve the inside of the bracket, I have to take 14, multiply it by 3, then add 10. And when you do that, your answer becomes 52. So I'm taking the 7.5 on the outside of the brackets and simply multiplying it by the value of 52 inside the bracket, and your final answer is 390. So I know that the sum of the first 15 terms is going to be 390. So n is equal to 15. That's where I'm plugging in the 15. 15, 15. Wherever you see a, you're going to plug in positive 5. Wherever you see d, you're going to plug in positive 3. Does that make sense? So the series formula, even though it's a little more extensive than the sequence formula, it is very easy to use. Okay, now this is a very important problem. We're looking for the sum of a series when you're only given the first couple of terms as well as your last term. So the first few terms and then your very last term. Now, I told you in the Unit 4 seminar, TN, the reason why students get confused on this test is not because of any of the process that you have to go through. You get confused about what TN actually means. Now remember, TN can be our general term formula, but it also can represent the value of the last term. So I know that the value of my last term is 384. I know my first term. I can figure out my common difference. However, if I pull this down, so I, I found all this information. A is equal to 3. My common difference is also equal to 3. And the value of Tn is equal to 384. But if you notice, this question has a dot, dot, dot in the middle. What is the one thing that I'm really missing that I need to, need to find? Yep, Siobhan? Exactly. Number of terms in the series. Whenever you have a dot, dot, dot in the middle and you know your first term as well as your last term, that means that you have to find the number of terms. You have to find n. And you're going to be asked to on your test. So you have to remember that when you are trying to find n, we are not going to use the series formula. Series formula you should only use when you know n. 
what we need to do is find the number of terms using my general term formula for an arithmetic sequence. So this is exactly what we did in Unit 4. So I have all this information. I am now going to plug this information into my equation. So Tn is equal to 384. A is equal to 3, and my common difference is also equal to 3. I am trying to solve for my n variable right here. So first I have to use the distributive property, and when you do that, 3 times n is 3n, three, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So 384 is equal to 3n. If we divide both sides by 3, n is equal to 128. So that is the number of terms in the sequence. Number of terms. We can now use this information to actually, what the question was asking us, was to find the sum of the series. But you can never find the sum of a series without knowing exactly how many terms there are. So, we're now going to substitute our values into the series formula. So we have A, D, and now we also know the value of N. You write down your arithmetic series formula, plug in all the data like we've been doing this entire seminar, and then we solve for the sum of 128. So inside the bracket, 2 times 3 is 6. 128 minus 1 is 127. Multiply that by 3, you get 381. You solve for inside the bracket, so this should have had another step, 64 times 387. That answer should give you 24,768. So keep in mind, even though we started off very small, our A was 3, our difference was 3, the sum of the first 128 terms is in the thousands, 24,000. So your numbers can get quite large.